The slump card was when I was taking Xanax. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Xanax is not a, like a productive drug. I just wrote raps, but I never rapped it to people, like, ever. And then when I went to jail, I met, that's when I met XXX. There's nothing really to do in there. We was in there for like 30 days together. So we were just in like the day room. Say this is like the day room and there's like a whole bunch of chairs. We're just beating on the chairs, just rapping and shit. That nigga had a gun charge. Back then, juvenile. That means he was like under 18. That nigga crazy. <laughs> X is crazy, son. I spent my birthday in juvenile jail. I think that nigga gave me an extra biscuit or a cookie it was or some shit. <laughs> that uh, so like for my birthday, for real, because it's not like they're gonna give you a birthday cake. So, yeah, but now nah, he was my friend in there, and I was like 16 or just turning 17 in jail or just turning 16, one of the two. But I just had like a little e charge, like it wasn't serious. Like, and then on top of that, I got arrested when I was on shrooms. Oh man, like literally, it was crazy, bro. Oh, I like they're telling me to write my name. I'm looking at them like, what? I'm like, I'm really in jail right now. Because <laughs> I had weed on me, I was trying to smoke, it was crazy. So I definitely ate some of the weed. Some of it. I didn't get caught with all the weed. I ate some of the weed, so it was a bad trip until they actually put me in the processing room. I had to sleep on them. Hard. <laughs> we both wouldn't be the same artists that we are if we didn't meet each other at all. Because we helped each other both evolve. And he taught me like, one side of being an artist and I taught him one side of being an artist and then it just like, we just formed our own selves in that like vicinity. Back then, I'm not even gonna lie, he had like a vibe of like a more like a pro era or like Earl Sweatshirt vibe, like, like in total, like he didn't have what he has now. He basically taught me to more be more aggressive and outspoken and with myself and like to be more like, ah, uh, like, like I used to be shy when I even rap music and not put as much emotion in my music. He just taught me how to be like more like upfront with shit and like how to say what I mean. And then I taught him like more of the like the suave part, like the flowing, like the the more like swaggy, like and he was like is like stiff. <laughs> I had to teach him how to flow. Like you feel me, like be natural. Uh, the first thing I did when I got out, we alright, first we made plans to connect with each other to first hit licks, like rob houses, brother. That's what he got arrested for. What bullshit, that's what we really did. Yo, for real. That's what he, we planned to link up for, but then it just became something else. I didn't see him for a month because he still was in. Even after I got out, he was still in for a month. So I didn't see him for a while. And then like, I went to my old high school to go pick up my homeboy so we could go do some other things so that I'm not gonna incriminate myself for. Um, and I seen him, and this nigga looks crazy. Yo, this nigga's always been crazy. He's always been that wild guy. But yeah, he had like no shirt on at school, pants <laughs> at school, pants, big ass like gash like, and it's not like this. It's like down the middle, so it's like open like this, so it's like this long. And like, yo, he's crazy as hell, son. And then like. We met up, I was like, yo, what the fuck, what's up? And then that's how we actually started linking back up and then we actually started fuck the robbery and shit. We were gonna try to do music. So he got, he went on eBay and bought a Snowball microphone. That's like one of the cheapest microphones you could get and record on. And then we used Audacity. Literally just us two just in a room, like microphone on bedstand, like, yeah, like this, like I'm in a chair like this, like yo, yo, and he's sitting next to me like, all right, shh, shh, everybody be quiet. <laughs> yeah, and then just the raw vocals, like he don't know how to edit like that good. So I was like, most of our sounds are distorted, but we use the distortion to our best advantage. Like the distortion is a part of our music now. I never knew like what level we was at until like this year, like we're at tour. Before me and X went on tour, we're looking at each, we're looking at his shit, like everything like, how the fuck did we do this? Like, <laughs> like, cause we came from like nothing, nothing at all, like with no fans. So we seen literally our Instagram, SoundCloud, and Twitter go from zero to wherever it is now. And people were like, love seeing what the fuck we got to do next. Cause like, we're just like wild cards. Like, we just spontaneous as hell. So it's just like, you never know what the fuck we're gonna do. We're gonna do some wild shit, definitely all the time. Cause that's what we try to do. We're like, yeah, what wild shit can we do next?
music was always played in my grandmother's house. That's when I used to live with my mom. And it's always Jamaican music. So all the old Jamaican tunes, you put it on, I'm gonna sing along. I have no choice because it's always it's like stuck in my head. But then again, on top of that, my dad was also a rapper, forcing me to write rhymes when I was a kid, I swear. Like forcing me, like not even like trying to make me like focus on homework, but like making me focus like how to write rhymes. He was a rapper back then though. It was crazy. I really didn't want to either. But I'm happy he did now. You feel me? <laughs> Yo, my dad is ecstatic for me right now. He actually went to the last show that I actually ended up missing because I missed my flight. So he went without me to, to X's show, a revenge show. Shit, yo, I was scared, but I was like, yo, y'all take care of him. Please make sure y'all take care of him. That nigga took so many pictures and videos of things. I mean, he's like, yo, this song. I'm like, I seen this like every day on tour. You're not showing me nothing special. That's when I lived in Miami. I had, a, um, me and X had, that was our f second manager. This is our, this is our manager right now. <laughs> me and X's manager. But um, that was our second manager. He was a porn star and he still is a porn star. He works for Bang Bros. He works for fucking everything, Pornhub, everything. He has strippers that like pays rent from stripping and then, he has girls there that do porn for him, and then like he's always fucking, even if he's not doing porn. So it's like, why not take advantage of this situation? He's fucking the girls, so I might as well do something funny. I rap to it. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I did some wild things in that house. Let's just, I'm not gonna incriminate myself, but yo, that house is crazy. Literally, a porn star was our manager. He, he's a talent artist. Like he's a ta he's a talent manager. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. It was lit though. It was lit. It was definitely lit living in a port house. It was a port house. That shit was fire. And with the revenge tour, uh, yo, I love and hated. I really hated it though. I really hated it because it was so tiring and crazy at the same time. Like every day you gotta go grabbing your dick. Every day you gotta go trying to like forcibly fuck you. Like on tour, girls come on to you like. They're the guy, like, yo, what's up? Yeah, I'm trying to fuck you. <laughs> like, let's get it, bathroom, brother. I'm like, yo, I just had a three shows back to back and I just had to drive here from 10 hours. I don't think I'm trying to do this. <laughs> that us, it get crazy on tour. Like, every fucking show, something happens, something. Somebody in the crowd gets knocked out. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say that, no, okay. But um, somebody in the crowd gets knocked out, because they're acting wild. Um, there's fights in there, titties everywhere. Like, and like two, there was like a, literally either a thousand, a thousand or more, or two thousand people in every show. So there's people at the tops and there's people at the bottom and it's filled, my nigga. So it's like, ah, uh, crazy. It is hard though, like going out every day, like overexerting your body, like, then barely sleeping, then trying to make music at the same time and be an artist at the same time, and then driving 10 hours on a fucking tour bus every day that the walls are closing in on me, right? Literally how we built the wave was, I think it was just based off the both of us working together and keeping each other both level-headed until it happened, because we were struggling like hard as fuck, so we both wanted to give up and then start doing some illegal shit. And then we would go in and either like one of us would be like, nah, and then when, what the other one would say, like, let's do some illegal shit, be like, nah. So it was just based off going through struggles and shit, like struggling hard as fuck, and then the motivation of being in the struggle to be like, nigga, I can't do this shit no more. So it's just like, yeah, I gotta make it. But the the blowing up part created a wave, um, it actually came on an accident. Like the the way we created the the music genre that we do, because people like to call it rap rock. What we make, supposedly we made a different genre, rap rock. Um, how that came about, we listen to everything, like every genre of music. It's the only thing I don't really listen to, and I probably still would listen to, is country. Right. So I listen to heavy metal. I listen to indie. I listen to Adele. Erica Badu, I listen to Florence in the Machine, everything, Marilyn Manson, everything. So it's like we took a liking to rock and roll. We don't call ourselves rock stars because we feel like it's this trend now. I don't like to call myself a rock star, but I do love rock. 
We really like, um, I couldn't speak for X. X could name a lot. I, there's a name, there's a group called Portugal, the Man Band. There's um, Sublime. There's, um, fuck. There's a song where it's like um, talking about, and I'm not like even in any type of specific religion, but it's talking about angels should die. I forgot the name of the group. That's one of my favorite songs. It's like where angels deserve to die or some shit like that. Um, what else is it? There is, um, I said Portugal the Man Band. Have you ever heard of um, Death Grips? Have you ever heard of Grimes? It's like a girl that sings, I love Grimes too. So it's like a bunch of just different shit. Like I love Tori Moy too. Like a whole bunch of craziness. I listen to a lot of shit. I love music. That's the point. That's why I even started making music. But making music hard. I didn't know it was more than just making music. I gotta go places. Like get sweaty. Jump around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.